So this turned into this. <laughs> it is forever trapped in the emulsion of time. A hologram. Video next. Yeah. Yeah, I flipped him a few bucks and we're gonna use this film. Ooh, this is different than how I remember it. At the Ohio State Holography Lab, we make two types of holograms, transmission and reflection. In the transmission case, an object is illuminated by plane wave laser light. And light scatters off of this object and onto a holographic film that contains a thin emulsion layer. This is what will store the interference pattern. Also, from the other side comes the reference beam. This reference beam meets the object beam in the emulsion layer and causes an interference pattern. This is what will be stored in the film. For the transmission case, the interference pattern can be thought of as being perpendicular to the plane of the film. The reflection case is similar in that there's still a reference beam, except that this time the object hides under the emulsion film and the reference beam passes through the film and is reflected off the object and back up into the film to interfere with itself. One can then visualize the interference pattern as more of one that is coplanar with the emulsion film. The setup we are using today is that of reflection and I personally like this one because it's easily viewed with a white light source uh, from far away, which essentially is creating a plane wave incident on the film and thus reconstructing that reference beam that we use to make the hologram. And so then it is easily viewed the object beam, quote unquote, which is now the image, comes out to our eyes. Well, this is the reference beam and it's being spread out and it occupies a spotlight probably around this big right now. Okay. It goes through <coughs> your film, so the unimpeded. Film, the film's just gonna lay on top of that glass? It gets sandwiched between a couple of pieces of glass. Oh, okay. It goes through, unimpeded, and then <coughs> it reflects off of the object inside of this box. Mm -hmm. The light that comes off of that object is then your object beam, and some of it comes back up through the film again. So the reference beam is a reference beam until it hits the object and then it becomes an object beam in this case. So we have to make something that will fit in this box. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna just do an arrangement of shells, I guess, on a rigid substrate and glue them down so they don't move with respect to each other. Ooh, spooky. Yeah, that looks, it looks good. It's a good like viewing area, I think. Okay, so if we put our film <coughs> like here, you should get most of this. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to put it here or there. <laughs> it's gotta be like there-ish. All right, yeah, it's gonna be your hogger. Sweet. Before the film can be used for shooting a hologram, it is first soaked in tea. This tea has two functions. One is it makes the emulsion layer more sensitive to light. And two, it actually expands the emulsion layer. After the hologram is shot, the tea is rinsed out and the emulsion layer shrinks back to its original size. The interference pattern shrinks with the emulsion and thus the frequency of light that will be used to observe the hologram is upshifted. So the object is not red, like the laser light used to create it, but it will actually be shifted up to something like yellow, or even green or blue, or if you're unlucky, and you tee for too long into the ultraviolet, and you will not be able to see the hologram. Start holding it up in the air if you want.
Some work must still be done to post-process the film, and it's divided into what I would call development and clarifying stages. The four chemical solutions used are developer, the stop bath, bleach, and vitamin C. And in between each of these, the film is going to be rinsed. So after the exposure, as we said before, the film is rinsed to get the tea out and it's then put into the developer to make sure that that process stops at an exact time. The film is then plunged into a stop bath, which is an acidic solution and neutralizes the basic developer. At this point, the film is totally safe from light exposure um, because the developer is completely removed from it. During development, the film turns black and must be bleached out to make it transparent once again. Finally, to reduce noise and crispen the image, the film is plunged into a vitamin C bath. Oh no, my hologram's black. Dude, we screwed up. Yeah, that'd be fun. It's gonna clear up now. We just did development, stop bath, and uh, rinse it all out. And now we're bleaching it to do something that we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> to make the silver transparent again. I'm not even sure it's silver based emulsion. <laughs> <laughs> to make the thing that's not transparent transparent again. Yeah. Is she gonna go? I think it's getting clearer. Ooh. All right. Nice and clear. Some some this bleach. Go ahead and bleach it, or uh, rinse it. Like this, but this part isn't super stable, so. What do you mean? See how it's dark there, but it's colorful there? Yeah. Which way is the light one? Oh, wait, uh, it's pretty bright. It's just uh. No, no, that's the right angle. Yeah. I see some stuff in there. Yeah, dude. So when we tee it up, it might look better, too. Damn. So, I so this, this side got messed up though. You see these waves? Yeah. What happened there? This, there was some movement down there. Yeah. Interesting. I'm surprised it came out red. That T must be pretty worn out. Sweet. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's not even see it. The vitamin C is actually breaking up the smaller solar particles yeah, that are from the noise. It breaks up some smaller, noisier components of the image. Cool. So, okay. that's much brighter. It's like I'm excited. Oh, damn, dude. Wow. You can get up close. Just like put it right up there next to it. Wow. Dude, rotate it around. There's a dark spot in there. Yeah, that's What's that from? The very extent of that shell was shaking a little bit. Really? Yeah. Dang, that is awesome. Wow. This is exciting. Yeah, pretty neat.